Chazera, Chazera, Chazera. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today we're back doing one of my favorite anime decks of all time and that is Arm Dragon. Arm Dragon is a deck that got support it was actually a while ago now, I was gonna say recently, but it's actually been some time. But I think this deck as an OTK deck can be fun to play in today's meta. And uh, there's multiple ways to play this deck. So there is the Dragon Ruler way, there is the OTK way, there's a pure version. I personally like playing the OTK version, but uh, until we get some more of the Dragon Rulers back, maybe if we get Tempest back to more than one, then at that point we'll play the Dragon Ruler build. But for now, I think the pure OTK build is the best way to go. So with that being said, I wanna bring you guys my OTK Arm Dragon deck profile for today's format. Let's go. So. We're starting off, of course, with three Arm Dragon level three, three level five, and three level seven, also with one level 10. So this is the ratios in the lineup that we're using. These are the most important cards. They all get you into each other, and it's really important to be playing all of these. Now, level 10 is uh, not the greatest, honestly. He's a cool big body that you guys can summon, but a lot of the time, seven, as well as this card, actually, this is one of the most important cards of your deck, three pile arm dragon. These two are like where you kind of want to get to. The level sevens are really, really important in this build and in this deck. So that's why, of course, we're maxing out on all of these for consistency. And this kind of like is your big boss if you end up making this guy, right? So that's it for the arm dragon monsters. And it's really important to play all of them. How their effects work essentially is you get rid of them and an extra monster. This one specifically needs a wind, but the rest of them don't. But these guys, you pitch a monster and then uh, you level up essentially. So they level themselves up. So it's really important because they all get effects as well when they go to the graveyard. So they essentially add cards to your hand and, and whatnot. So they're all consistency cards. So them on top of being their main monsters that you're leveling up into are also all consistency for you. So that's really important. So that's it for the monsters. But then we are of course also playing three arm dragon flash and one arm dragon lightning. Flash is essentially just an e for the deck. So you're just playing the three e -Telly. And this is a really good card that you want to search a lot of time that you can just kind of sit on, text your cards, it does other things for you. So it's really nice, right? So that's it for the armed dragon specific engine. However, there's a lot of other cards that synergize so well with arm dragon. So wind monsters synergize really well. Level seven monsters synergize really well, right? So that's kind of what we're aiming to do here. So of course we have the one tempest and the one blaster. You need to be playing one on one. Unfortunately, they're just at one on one right now. If tempest come back some more than one, then, then this deck can actually kind of low-key be cracked. But for now, I think one-on-one is uh, its all you can play and it's you have to be playing it. They're extenders for you. They only need dragons. Tempest, of course, needs wind. This needs fire. But technically, they can just use dragons, so they're just extenders. And uh, they're really easy to pitch. If you draw these and you pitch them with your arm dragons, it's really nice getting these in the graveyard for you as well. And then them being bodies for you is really nice for some of the other plays because, again, it's a level 7. Level 7 is really important because it makes your rank 7 plays. It actually even makes synchro 10 plays potentially for you, which is really nice as well, right? So these two, of course, you're playing. And then to continue on with the level 7 theme, we're playing 3 Fenrir and two Panker Tops. So again, this is a going second build of the deck. So because we're going second, we really want to be able to play good going second cards. Now, typically with this build and with this deck, with the OTK deck, you want to be playing board breakers. Now, board breakers are not that good in today's format. Really, you need to be playing a lot of hand traps. And so for that reason, I am compensating. I'll show you guys the rest of the deck in a little bit, but I'm compensating for some of that board breaker, like the presence not being there with the Fenrir, with the Panker Tops. Because going second, Fenrir and Panker Tops, they work really, really well together and they help you pretty much break any board. So for anyone who doesn't know, actually, I kind of kind of explain it. Panker Tops just requires your opponent to have more monsters than you, whereas Fenrir requires you to have no monsters. So if your opponent has two monsters, you can special summon Fenrir, they'll still have more monsters than you, so you can special summon Panker Tops, and then you can kind of break boards with just those two cards before you actually have to make any plays of your own, which is really nice. So that's it for the count over here. That's the uh, engine, I guess you can call it. We'll count these part of the engine as well. Hey guys, editing Spanko here. I just want to say that Fenrir also synergizes with the deck because he gets an extra monster to your hand. You can special summon Fenrir, get another Fenrir, and the extra monster in your hand is really important because your arm dragon monsters need to pitch monsters for their effects. So it gets you an extra monster, which means that you have more fodder for these guys over here. So that's why this synergizes really well with arm dragon. So that's kind of like the engine over here, right? Very consistent, I would say. It's uh, it's, it's really powerful, really. It, it's not that... It, the only thing this deck kind of holds to is like Ash because you're like losing a bunch of cards to get other cards, but... It's still really powerful and it's very consistent. Speaking of Ash, uh, we're playing a lot of hand traps. So we're playing three Ash, we're playing three Bell, we're playing two Mourner, and then we're playing three Bailer. So that's our hand trap ratios, and I actually really like these ratios. Pause. You called that Bailer? Did I say Bailer? You called the, the Imperm Bailer. Sorry, Imperm. Not Bailer. I'm not even going to cut that part out. 
We're just gonna use this for comedic effect. Yeah, so Valor, no, not Valor, Imperm, I did it again. But uh, we're playing Mourner. Actually, I was the reason I'm thinking about Valor is because of this card here. So Valor is really popular in this format. I actually like playing the Mourner instead because the level three tuner is actually really important. If you open multiple of these, we are playing all level seven monsters. So if you're not able to OTK your opponent, something you can do is end on something like a Baron, which is really nice, right? Especially in simplified game states, if you're able to break their board, do a ton of damage, and then end on a Baron, that could be really powerful. So we're playing these in instead of playing um, the, the Veilers. That's for the hand traps, but then we're also playing the two talents, one called by the grave, and then just for consistency, we're playing two desires. Unfortunately, this deck can't play prosperity and stuff, so desires is on the best one for it. I like the talents right now, going second, I think this is really good, stealing your opponent's monster, drawing cards if you need to draw extra cards, it's, it's a really powerful card. And uh, yeah, I really like these ratios. I think these are really, really nice. The best hand traps, I think, in the format, other than Shifter, but you can't play Shifter in this deck. So these are just the best hand traps that you guys can be playing. So that's it for the main deck. I believe it's 40 on the dot. And then uh, for the extra deck over here, we are playing just rank seven packages. So we're playing the Dark Arm, playing the Red Eyes. If you uh, don't OTK your opponent, but you leave them on low life, you can make this. Then for an OTK package, we're playing two of the Rebellion as well as two of the Overlord. This is just an OTK package for you. When you need to make this, you just go for game. And then of course you're playing the one Zeus as well. You know, playing AC monsters, play Zeus, very powerful card. Then for the Link Monsters, we're playing IP, SP, Unicorn, BLS. BLS because all your monsters are level seven or up. So this is really easy to make like kind of like a boss monster, like a little untouchable guy. And then we're playing uh, one access code, Two seals, of course, because it's a dragon deck. And then lastly, because we can, we're playing Baron. So Baron is really good because nothing actually in this deck locks you out. And because you're not locked out into anything, if you make Baron with one of your sevens in a level three, you're kind of, especially in a simplified game state, it's, it's, it's absolutely insane. So that's why I like to playing these. I, I think this extra deck, like low key, is kind of perfect. I, I don't think I would change anything up with this at all. The only thing that could change in different formats is if like a card like Unicorn is not that great and there's another good rank seven monster, you know, generic kind of card, but it's a lot of toolbox, right? It's a lot of toolbox. You don't need your extra deck too much, but it, it, it's, it's nice when it comes up and helps you OTK. Then for a side deck, side deck, I always say this, it's always gonna be up to personal preference. It's always also gonna depend on your locals. So if your locals are a bunch of combo players, then make sure you side hate for combo. If they're a bunch of back row, Make sure you side hate for back row. But here I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of everything. So three Nibiru, two Valor. Valor keeps coming up in this video for some reason. But this is just another hand trap that you guys can be playing. If Talents is not that good into certain decks or if some other cards are not good into certain decks, you just play these instead. Uh, Valor is really, really nice. Or if you think your opponent is actually gonna force you to go first, you can side out cards like Panker Tops and then side these in because at least these going first can do something for you, right? Like even if you're not making a really big board, you have a hand trap, right? Then we're playing one Harpies as well, three Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, this is really important for the uh, back row matchups. We can play evenly mash. I just don't like it because I want to kill my opponent and uh, not not in game, in game, please, please, in game. But yeah, I, I wanna I wanna win the game, so I'm not playing uh, evenly. We're playing these instead. And then for going first, you saw that we're playing seals, right? So when you're playing seals, you have access to cards like Amorphe Sloth and Quaki Mero Drago. Now Drago is only really good into light and dark matchups, so you don't play this one into everything. This one is pretty good, into, pretty much good into everything because you just summon this, you're locking your opponent out, and it is at zero zero, so they would have to attack over it before they're able to even do anything. But you know, forcing them to use their battle phase means they're not going to be able to end your turn right there or, or win the game right there. And then um, it's just a really good card in that sense. So that's why the sloth, and then this locks out a lot of decks as well. And then lastly, we're going first, three Solemn Judgment. Just the best one first card in the game, honestly. You know, if you're forced to go first, you make a little bit of a board, they want to break your board. Solemn Judgment is just the best card in the game. So that's that's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. That is Arm Dragon uh, for today's format. Again, I think uh, it's very, like, some of it's very standard. I, I hate saying that word, but some of it is very standard, like maxing out on the Arm Dragons. The only thing that really changes with these kind of decks is whether you're playing board breakers or you're playing hand traps. In today's format, we need to be playing hand traps, and I think I'm playing the best hand traps that we can be playing. But in other formats, for example, where board breakers are really good, you just swap out the hand traps for stuff like Lightning Storm. Don't play Dark Luna no more because you want to OTK, but Lightning Storm and all those other board breakers are really, really powerful as well. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, that is my list. If you guys have anything you guys want to, you know, comment on, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. We upload seven days a week here on the channel and you guys are gonna see deck profiles like these at least twice a week, if not more. So thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it. And I feel like I said I appreciate you guys the most. Yeah, I gotta go. Thank you. Peace.